uh, presentation. Um, and yeah, to, um, I will share my screen. Can you see it? Yes, of course. Yeah, great. So, um, so to, today's talk is like based on it, uh, uh, like indeed, like uh, on uh, Fulia Paidin's uh, project, which is uh, funded by the, the Spanish Ministry of uh, University Science and Technology and Innovation, if I'm not wrong. And it is like based on, and it's called the financial liberalization and, and authoritarian survival, which looks at the comparative cases of Turkey, Qatar, and Malaysia, and tries to understand uh, how and why the author, uh, authoritarian regimes uh, make like rely on or make like, or like instrumentalize financial liberalization and or financial uh, 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 repression policies to remain in power. And here, um, so, so we have already uh, produced the like a first paper, which also uh, looks at the dependent, the, the political consequence of dependent financialization in Turkey under the AKP uh, Just and Development uh, Party's uh, uh, government since the early 2000s. And this is the second paper uh, on the same project. Uh, uh, and then it is trying to understand the, uh, the role of growth models and growth regimes uh, uh, and, and its impact on bureaucratic autonomy, especially on the uh, autonomy of both the de facto and the de jure autonomy of the monetary authority and the bank regulatory uh, agency, as we will discuss uh, uh, in today's uh, uh, session. So, uh, and the, uh, the outline of, the, of today's presentation is, we, uh, I, I will first uh, go through why do we care about growth models, regimes, and its uh, relationship to bureaucratic autonomy. Then, then I will present, uh, talk about why we care about the Turkish case. I will then uh, discuss the method employed in this study, uh, which will be uh, uh, proceeded by, uh, with the literature re uh, review and the analytical framework, which, uh, which uh, that, enlightened like inform the analysis in this work. And I will uh, briefly discuss the uh, finding that this, uh, this paper is still uh, uh, is in the like status of like working paper. We are still like, trying to manage to like, uh, finalize uh, our like uh, uh, drafts. So, so you will like have the like preliminary like the findings and I will like try to elaborate on these findings. And then we will conclude with the summary of our findings and it's theoretical and empirical implications for public policy, regulatory governance, and political economy literatures. And to, to start with, why do we care about this case of, or this like relationship between growth models and growth uh, regimes and its impact on bureaucratic autonomy, especially on uh, the jury autonomous uh, 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 bureaucratic agencies, public organizations. The first relates to uh, growth models and growth uh, regimes models uh, discuss uh, or say like more like a focus primarily on the uh, relations like cross class relations on the uh, growth outcomes uh, and then the macroeconomic structures of and and this is mainly the like the main uh, focus of growth models regime is on uh, the uh, cross class like relations such as in the case of uh, mm -hmm. Uh, in like recent uh, work, especially which was re re uh, uh, re uh, inaugurated again with the like uh, Alucu like uh, uh, Bakros and and his uh, colleagues' work since the uh, politics uh, politics and society uh, special issue on uh, growth models literature and there is also the a, a longer tradition or uh, which is like related to the growth regimes. Uh, uh, which is uh, the uh, which which emerges from the uh, uh, regulation school uh, in the uh, which like originates from the like uh, Robert uh, Robert Robert Boyer's and uh, and Michel Agleta's uh, classical works and and this and this and this literature also talks about uh, uh, cross class relations and institutional arrangements uh, 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 labor labor state uh, state business relations. To understand why certain countries like like pre, uh, establish certain growth models, as, such as say the credit-led regimes or or export uh, export-led regimes, uh, and then they but 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 this but this literature does not look at 
uh, even if they talk about public policies or policy implementation, they do not discuss the role of bureaucracy in policy design and implementation. And, and in, in particular, in more like more specifically, they do not problematize the role of bureaucratic autonomy uh, while uh, like certain uh, policy growth models and regimes emerge or transform into uh, transform from one from one structure to another. And there is also and this and this paper also tries to like talk, like uh, talk about and like a marry bureaucratic autonomy and regulatory governance literatures with the comparative political economy uh, literature on growth models and regimes and. Uh, when it comes to uh, the, uh, public administration and public policy literatures, uh, which is also related to the uh, regulatory governance literatures, they also do not uh, uh, discuss uh, as uh, about uh, Tobias Buck and Kai Vekwick's uh, work emphasize. Also, uh, we do not like uh, uh, know much about the like actual political economic motivations on bureaucratic autonomy. So, so how? Uh, decision makers, uh, uh, the the principles, uh, political economic motivations can in, like influence uh, uh, why and how certain policies are like implemented through the like uh, uh, like public organizations, or they are mandated to uh, implement certain policies and or say uh, 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 firing hiring of uh, high rank uh, officials. Uh, which are also related to like bureaucratic autonomy. So this, so so these literatures also do not problematize such dimensions. And also, there is a, a new like a, a, a Burgoyne literature on the uh, on the on the relationship between uh, democratic backsliding around the world and its impact on bureaucratic autonomy. Uh, and currently, as you might uh, as you may recall, a new uh, CUP book. Uh, uh, Published by uh, uh, Bauer and his like, colleagues in this edited volume on democratic backsliding and bureaucratic autonomy. So this paper also tries to uh, contribute to this literature, uh, which then talks about the impact of political economy dimensions, motivations, concerns on bureaucratic uh, autonomy, rather than just uh, uh, primarily say like political concerns of the incumbents, and. Uh, you might also wonder why, our, so why we are looking at the Turkish case. It is like, first of all, we observe the the Giri Autonomous Central Bank and the bank regulator uh, uh, have become very like dependent and also very like uh, have become a like, target of the of the AKP government. And then like, even if these uh, even if these uh, organizations were given legal autonomy. Uh, in the early 2000s, after the uh, after the local banking and financial crisis uh, in in 2000 and 2001, so so and and, and which is also like a puzzling is like according to the Dincher and Ivan Green's uh, paper, which looks at like the transparency uh, and uh, uh, autonomy of central banks around the world. We observe that it is very it's a bit like puzzling uh, as the uh, as the Turkish central bank was like uh, ranking like, like very high compared to its peers in terms of transparency and the jury autonomy but we observe that there is also a dramatic decline uh, which is uh, which can also be observed in the case of the bank regulator so then we also try to understand this puzzle and its background like a political economic motivations uh, of the government to uh, 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 that then uh, like led to the such uh, erosion in the autonomy uh, and then we, uh, and then like while we are like trying to like open that the like, black box and trying to like investigate and, and explore like make sense of these uh, political economic motivation, we observe that uh, we have observed that the uh, the uh, the macroeconomic structure which relates to the growth model uh, and which also depends on a as in a in a certain a part uh, in a in a uh, on a uh, particular uh, gr uh, growth regime. Which like who is like like uh, one of the like, main pillars that like, relate to uh, establishment and maintenance of 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 bureaucratic autonomy of the central bank and the bank regulator uh, have become like transformed into uh, uh, into uh, into a form like in which we observe the central bank and the and the bank regulator uh, have become a subordinate and a direct agency of the government despite uh, uh, despite their legal and. Uh, the jury autonomy at that time, and we observe that especially the 
uh, clientelistic relations between a certain firms, especially uh, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, construction sector, and the export-oriented manufacturers, uh, which, uh, which which ask for lower interest rates as well as uh, uh, as well as uh, loose bank regulate, uh, regulatory standards to access to like for for easy access to credit, then led to the uh, government. To, uh, to to centralize policy process and to and to and to subvert these two organizations so that uh, it's so in order to address the material interests of these uh, 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 non-financial private sector uh, um, 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 constituency and the, uh, in terms of the method uh, so this so this study uh, uh, adopted an ex uh, adopted an exploratory case study method whose empirics rely on field research that was conducted in early 2020, just before the uh, just before the pandemic like, hit the country. So we were a bit lucky to be in the field as we as we as we conducted 24 semi-structured open-ended elite interviews with senior central bankers, regulators, uh, senior bankers, uh, as, uh, and all, as well as uh, journalists. And um, and then these uh, uh, interviews were complemented by uh, written sources such as official reports of the uh, CBRT central bank and the uh, financial markets reports and the reports of the bank regulator, BRSA Bank Regulation Supervision Agency. So hereafter BRSA, and media reports, which refers to which especially like the collects like uh, written uh, data on. These statements of like uh, certain ministers, the prime minister, the president, uh, and and also uh, business uh, 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 businessmen, and the steps of data analysis included in uh, trans transcribing uh, interviews and also collecting like collating the the written sources, which were then quoted according to the uh, salient and common themes. When it comes to the motivating literature and the analytical framework employed in the study, as I said, growth model and growth models and growth regimes literatures uh, literature do not problematize the role of uh, the uh, role of bureaucratic autonomy. And here we also need to we also make this distinction between a growth model and a growth regime as we understand them. Uh, as there is a, a need a, a significant nuance uh, that that needs to be highlighted. First, uh, we understand growth models as which mean uh, uh, isolating from the cross-class relations and institutional arrangements, which are mainly a part of the like, growth regimes uh, approach to uh, certain growth outcomes and the and the, and the structures that lead to certain uh, certain certain forms of production, modes of production, and therefore uh, economic uh, growth outcomes. But growth models primarily relate to the macroeconomic structure. It could be, for example, credit let, which, uh, uh, which relies on lower interest rates and, uh, and expand and, uh, and easier access to credit. Uh, or it could be export-led export -led growth model where uh, demand is mainly driven by foreign demand. So it is not internal demand. So it is not just consumption. Uh, so in-depth uh, uh, consumption, so, uh, uh, like in the uh, uh, credit-led model, mm -hmm. but in the growth model, it, for a demand is generated from uh, like out, like a, a beyond the beyond our borders. So it is based on the like, foreign demand, and uh, 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 and and ample prosperity is like, also generated through like producing more and selling more right? compared to. The, uh, in comparison to the credit-led mo uh, credit model, where uh, uh, it is like a, a prosperity and economic growth is mainly like generated through consumption, and generally, and, and which also then uh, relies on uh, imports mainly. And growth regimes here is uh, linking or say that like building on the policy regimes uh, uh, approach in the public policy framework. We understand growth regimes as the constellation of actors, institutional arrangements, and policy ideas. Here, actors are referred to collective or individual uh, actors, and institutional arrangements regulate the interactions between actors and ideas relate to like policy preferences of these ideas. So, policy, so public policies then reflect. So, so, so in our case, monetary policy or bank regulatory policies 
reflect the policy preferences of the uh, dominant actors and institutional arrangements. Here, as we are looking at the bureaucratic autonomy, it then uh, looks primarily at the, uh, uh, the public organization, like relative, uh, relative like position place in the and in the policy process and the and the legal arrangements that then locate them in certain uh, places and also which then enable or put constraints on their like a, a policy actions and here we also like look and when it, uh, so it is not just a bureaucratic so it's a bureaucracy and the, and the government uh, but we also add the third uh, third actor here which looks at the policy preferences of the non-financial private sector, which mainly uh, I mean, like looks at the, uh, uh, the, the, main, the main constituency, political economic constituency of the government. And in the Turkish case, as, as I mentioned also, it then uh, 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 reflects the uh, SMEs, uh, construction firms, and uh, export-oriented manufacturers. But, when it comes to the credit-led growth model and the and, and the regime it relies on, so 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 so, so, so here, uh, growth models reflect as they reflect the macroeconomic structure, as growth regimes also like reflect as, as, as from our understanding it reflects institutional arrangements, actors, and policy ideas. So we so we so we argue that growth models emerge on certain growth regimes, so that. Then, like uh, so, maintenance or emergence of certain growth models, whether it is credit-led or export-led, uh, arise on, emerge on, rely on certain uh, growth regimes, which reflect the dominant actors, their policy preferences, and the institutional arrangements, which regulate the like interactions between these actors, but uh, which also like uh, put the like, certain constraints on. Uh, opponents or some like the subordinated actors in the regime, uh, which then perhaps say like enable the dominant actors to enact like, certain policies, right? And and the, the, when it comes to the credit-led model, it is it's a bit like nuanced in the uh, in the in the developing countries because credit-led model in the in developing countries mainly rely on like like putting aside say. Uh, resource uh, resource oriented or like resource say like a more like extractive economy such as uh, Russia or say even like Kazakhstan etc. So in these countries uh, uh, it's a bit like different, but in but in countries uh, uh, which uh, which has like like a, a, a lower level of say such like extractive like resources. Uh, so the credit led uh, growth model mostly rely on fickle capital inflows. So capital flows then define whether domestic credit expansion can take place or not. So when there is like, enough or say, adequate like, uh, uh, capital inflows, credit expansion becomes easier as you can also uh, achieve over interest rates. But when capital flows turn to uh, uh, outflow or, or or if the country experiences a sudden flow a sudden stop sorry so then credit expansion can be slow or even we can say like a credit uh credit like repression or even like negative annual growth uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, negative like growth rates in the like percentage that rises in the uh, credit allocated to the private sector and also we also it's a so, so so while like, like putting that aside, so bureaucratic autonomy, which we like to look here at the like in, in both like uh, aspects, the first is the de jure and the de facto. Uh, and um, so, so de jure like relates to the uh, legal legal uh, autonomy that is present in the like laws uh, or in or it could be even in the like, constitution. But in but when it comes to the de, uh, but uh, but uh, legal arrangements like legal rules, norms that like, do not guarantee de facto autonomy. So, uh, which then relates, according to uh, Maghetti, it, it, it relates to the uh, uh, um, uh, development of self, self preferences um, uh, of public organizations and their ability to rely on their uh, regulatory uh, capabilities. So, even if you, even if the organization may have uh, legal uh, legal autonomy, such legal autonomy might not be uh, might not guarantee what might what we might observe 
in practice, right? So bureaucratic autonomy is is very important, like according to the like the literature, it's argued that it can shield uh, against discretionary arbitrary policy decisions, and even can uh, can become a uh, an influential like veto point to even to counter uh, uh, democratic backsliding. But still, politicization is also likely, and then we then can observe. Uh, as, the, as the recent literature on uh, democratic backsliding and its impact on bureaucratic autonomy, as Boren, uh, Boren and colleagues like, identified uh, uh, incumbents that mostly like, uh, here in, in our case, uh, populist like uh, incumbents can, uh, can, can engage in capture reform, dismantling or sabotage to, to use or sideline a bureaucracy so, so as to, to achieve their like political, like economic uh, 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 objectives, and you might then wonder why an incumbent would do, but like would, would engage such like, practices to, uh, and then which can then lead to uh, uh, the loss or say a, the like a decay in bureaucratic autonomy. It is all like the argument uh, also, which is also the, like relies on the. Uh, uh, on the like literature that I mean here once the, especially once a like crisis like hits the hits the uh, authoritarian regime such as in the such as in Turkey, which then like, like uh, triggers a political economic like a survival motives of the incumbent in order to address the material interests and to maintain its uh, political economy constituency like uh, intact uh, so as to like remain in power. We observe that the incumbent feel that pressure to to implement policies that appeal to the material interests of its political economy constituency and then this in turn can lead to uh, bureaucratic uh, the uh, like decay in bureaucratic autonomy and especially as we as we argued then argued in the in the case of the like dependence of the developing countries on fickle uh, capital inflows for credit expansion so after, especially during a crisis or even in uh, instability, financial or economic instability, uh, capital inflows and define uh, the policy space the authoritarian incumbent has to address the uh, political economic concerns of its constituency. So, in order to like to like generate the stimulus. Um, and if you cannot, for example, like depend on like inflows, then you need to mobilize internal resources or to like push your uh, autonomous agencies to to like cater like policies to appeal for the uh, political economic interests of your main constituency. And when it comes to uh, our, uh, to, uh, to to continue with the like findings, we also need to like to highlight the uh, previous like the setting here. So especially since the uh, since the local banking and uh, economic crisis in Turkey in in, in 2000, 2001, uh, the change so the uh, dependent financialization has changed its. Uh, form uh, it used to like depend like, more on it is, uh, depend on the indebtedness of the state of the government but it but, but after the but after the crisis then a uh, private sector was uh, given a more space for the uh, to, to receive like, more credit as the state shrink its uh, its size and it's like uh, lowered its uh, public sector borrowing requirements uh, so then the private sector became the including households and also the like non-financial private sector uh, started to like uh, started to uh, uh, receive like more and to get like more uh, uh, credit, which then like led to its like uh, like in, like rising rates of uh, indebtedness. But here uh, it also like led to uh, also like consumption also, but then like which also and this also uh, enabled the private sector countries, uh, sorry, uh, firms, especially SMEs, which are dependent very much on banking, like bank credit compared to the large like, corporations, which have uh, easier access to international markets where they can uh, 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 receive or get like the loans at, the, at, at, at cheaper rates, uh, uh, even if it's, if, even if it's uh, foreign exchange 
uh, 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 foreign exchange denominated loans, they can at least like even for like the Turkish lira loans, they can access to the international markets. But for SMEs and uh, export oriented manufacturers and also construction firms, which are more internal consumption, uh, even if they, even in like the case of like manufacturers, they prefer uh, lower interest rates and easier access to bank credit. So this then also like uh, uh, also with as 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 the state they uh, reduced its public sector borrowing requirements. So the so the pool was actually like became like more uh, 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 flexible or say like there was the more they left uh, more uh, resources for the for the for the non-financial say private sector to draw like more loans. So. In time, the private sector also became very dependent on easier access to bank credit in time, okay? And so, so in terms of as this, so, so, so putting, it, putting this the credit led regime and model aside, and the, which made the, the like, private sector more and more dependent on easier access to the bank credit. So bureaucratic autonomy, as I said, CBRT and BRC enjoyed uh, 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 substantial autonomy in the early 2000s. But even if like there were some like a conflicts over like over like high interest rates, which were a bit like the double digits at that time, like just like in uh, uh, in the aftermath of the of the local banking and financial crisis, even in two thousand three, like uh, the the uh, the the then prime minister Erdogan, for example, criticized the central bank for high interest rates, which uh, the like private sector like they preferred even at that time. And there were also like a conflicts over macroprudential measures in the early 2000s, but even in, like despite such concerns and discursive attacks on these two organizations, they were at least like isolated or the like, government did not have this such a political economic uh, survival instincts and motives to pressure these uh, organizations. So they were a bit like isolated from daily political economic like, interventions. And as we also like observe, so, so while these organizations were uh, uh, a bit like isolated, we also observe that in the meantime, we observe that both households and SMEs, as well as like larger uh, corporates, uh, which also includes like the construction firms and uh, export oriented manufacturers. So everyone in the private sector became more and more dependent on credit allocation, as we can observe in the like nominal like rise of uh, uh, total the number of like uh, uh, total uh, uh, credit the loans that like, uh, provided to the uh, uh, private sector, non-financial private sector and households, and their uh, like a share like has risen uh, share in the like a GDP also like a rising also. And we also observe that, as I say, um, the uh, the like non-financial like private sector like became like more in, more like dependent on uh, uh, easier access to credit. We also observe that it's very responsive to uh, uh, interest rate. So here you here you observe the um, so, so this is the like a quarterly uh, a percentage so so so, uh, so so quarterly change in. So it's from the from the early 2000s to until like the last year, so the end of last year, we observe that so, so whenever the uh, uh, percentage like uh, uh, in, so, uh, rates on corporate loans, interest rates so, so on average uh, apply to so, so, uh, uh, corporate loans on average apply to the like, non-financial private sector. So whenever it goes down, so we observe. Uh, uh, a rapid like response to like for example into since the like 2013 like, as the uh, like interest rates have went down we observe for example like the responsiveness of like getting like drawing more and more like loans so there are like several like uh, several like uh, periods of uh, spikes here or say like when it comes to like so, so, for example in the last year you might like also observe that this is so, so there is a very like high like, correlation between uh, the like uh, interest rates and uh, and corporate indebtedness, whenever interest rates go down, uh, they um, so the, the private sector just uh, like rides the tide and then like it throws like starts to draw more and more 
uh, credit. So this then also shows like how how much the uh, private sector became too much dependent on credit allocation and easier access. But the but in but in like the thirteen but but two thousand but two thousand thirteen became a critical juncture for the government as well as the private sector because at that time uh, we uh, as you can as you may also like recall the uh, the what which was called as like uh, uh, like the Fed's uh, 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 tantrum at that time in uh, in May June, so the uh, so the Fed announced that it will no longer uh, uh, finance the like uh, financial markets uh, as it will then they also like uh, 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 drafted this like plans like announced its plans to withdraw its uh, 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 easier like the quantitative easing uh, measures at that time. So. This then led to so, so this signaled uh, tighter standards, international like the uh, credit standards to be like tightened in the following period. And 2013 was also uh, politically was like volatile for the for the government and the country as well. Uh, first, there was the Gezi Park process in 2013 in June, and then there was the uh, corruption scandal in in mid December 2013 and because of this like high uh, so this like heightened like uh, perceptions of risk and uh, uh, and like, and also the like political instability in the country then led to a very like a dramatic like a high interest rate hike in in early 2014 and then this then led to a a critical a very uh, uh, a non negligible like conflict between the central bank and Erdogan, and as well as the private sector, which became very much uh, dependent on easier access to bank credit. So, it, so even if there were some like minor uh, interest rate uh, reductions like, until 2016, where like when the when the when the then CBRT governor Adam Bahçi was replaced by someone else in uh, by a uh, by by another governor. Who had like close relations with the uh, son-in-law, like Erdogan's son-in-law, even before he like assuming uh, assuming uh, the uh, governorship, as we can observe in the WikiLeaks documents on uh, 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 which is called in the which can be like, found in the uh, on the like title like the uh, uh, Berat's box, so which then like shows the like Gmail account of uh, Erdogan's son-in-law, so we can. Uh, obviously observed that the, the new governor was uh, uh, had such close relations in uh, uh, over the uh, legal mandate uh, uh, on of the of the CBRT. So even like before his before before uh, before like Murat Chetinkaya, so this guy's like, name is Murat Chetinkaya. So before Chetinkaya assuming power, uh, Aydan Bahçe engaged in a discursive struggle with Erdogan as he then even. Uh, complained and and even say like here, uh, he for example in in 2015 he even accused the central bank governor to to be like to say like uh, playing according to the preferences of the interest rate lobby and he accused him of uh, 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 treason. So the CBRT governor is was like uh, uh, accused of treason. So. Uh, so following that period, so this volatile period, uh, which also like reflects us so at that time, we also observed that the like business complained a lot, but it was a bit like contained like at that time. But but there was also another critical juncture in 2016 in in mid uh, in mid July. There was a fuel a failed coup, which also then led to also like a rising volatility and impact on capital flows. Which turned into even a sudden stop and then a capital outflows. And the next year, in order to overcome this, uh, uh, overcome the like dependence on capital inflows, as they slowed down after this uh, very like a uh, very very long period of since like 2013 until like 2016. So these like two and a half years uh, 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 reduced re capital inflows, but then. Because the private sector requested and demanded too much of credit still for uh, to uh, to be like incurred in uh, like denominated in lower like interest rates, 
So um, in order to like overcome such like external restrictions, constraints uh, emerging from like lower rates of or like slowdown and slowdown in uh, capital inflows, so the government tried to mobilize internal resources by making the treasury current guarantor of uh, loans to SMEs, construction firms, and even uh, export-oriented manufacturers to say to 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 have the access to easier uh, so access to corporate loans at easier terms, which also like uh, pressured the, the banks to provide that that types of uh, loans. And this period was also like followed by the 2018 crisis, especially with the past year Brunson crisis, if you call it here uh, in Turkey, so, so which also like triggered criticism, even on like tr uh, Trump's like, tweets, uh, for uh, which then like claimed that the that if this so if this person which was in which was sentenced uh, and it was uh, and Pastor Brunson was in jail. So Trump's uh, uh, Trump like claimed that if he could even like destroy Turkey's economy uh, if he, if he was not released from the jail. So did this also then like trigger the very uh, trigger the volatility and then it like heightened like risk perceptions um, uh, over the uh, sovereign debt default rates and then the, which then also translated into capital outflows at that time. So. As the, as, the, as the external financial conditions became like more and more constrained since 2013, business started to complain as well because this translated into higher and higher interest rates. Okay, yeah. This then also like they translated into higher and higher interest rates and they then uh, uh, became more and more like vocal. Uh, in the, uh, for their like uh, in terms of demands for their like a, a lower interest rates and easier credit to uh, uh, easier access to credit, and because of the clientelistic relations between gov business and government, a a politically like a politically and like pol uh, an economically challenged uh, authoritarian incumbent was in, is, did not I mean was not able to stay uh, idle or say irresponsive to such calls. So then first we observed like discursive attacks on monetary policy, which then like, translated into a firing and hiring of like new central bank governors and even deputy governors. We also observed the uh, like bank regulator to engage in loose bank regulatory standards and even uh, which is called as like micromanaging like banks and trying to influence banks to increase their uh, credit allocation to private sector while reducing the uh, standards of credit allocation. And, we, and such de facto, uh, uh, de facto interventions did not remain at that, uh, within this realm, but we also observed changes in the legal arrangements, such as in the like reducing the, one, uh, the, the governor's the tenure by one year, uh, uh, that there were also an MOE, MOU between the treasury and the CBRT, to allocate uh, central bank reserves for to, to control the uh, foreign exchange rate and to allocate the credit through the uh, public banks, which was at first a transfer to the public banks, and then which were uh, and and later that amounts like which then like, amounted to like reach the level of 128 uh, billion 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 US dollars. To, and, 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 and that amount was channeled into the financial markets and we still like, don't know like, how this mechanism worked because of the like, loss of accountability on the government as well as the CBRT's side. So in, so in conclusion, we observe that the, uh, the role of uh, growth models and to, and to sustain a, a particular growth model, uh, in our case, credit-led model, uh, and in order to sustain it, you then transform the change or say the play with the growth regime by changing the institutional arrangements. And here in our case, the arrangements based on the autonomy, like legal as well as de facto autonomy of two main public organizations, which have a critical roles on policy design and as well as implementation, the CBRT and the RSA. So in order to sustain the credit model, uh, credit-led model, 
uh, we observe that the incumbent, this authoritarian regime, uh, uh, then transformed the gross regime by uh, uh, putting like constraints, de facto and and de jure uh, uh, constraints through uh, amending the like laws on the laws on the central bank, as well as like, intervening in the uh, daily operations of these two organizations to appeal to the and to address political economic interests of its political economic constituency. And in terms of uh, uh, we are, so in terms of contributions and applications, so this paper tries to talk to the uh, this Burgonic literature and democratic backsliding and bureaucratic autonomy. We then try to like highlight the actual like, political economic motivations that lead to the decay in bureaucratic autonomy. So it's not just the political issues or organizational issues, but there is also political economic motivation drivers of decay in bureaucratic autonomy in these countries. And the other is when it comes to institutionalization of bureaucratic autonomy, we can observe that when a government faces a crisis, the institutionalization for the sake of political survival can be likely. And when it comes to regulatory agency autonomy, there is also this case of whether like regulatory agencies are captured solely by the regulatee. In our case, it is not captured by the banking sector, but we can argue that regulatory agencies can be captured by non-bank financial, say, uh, sorry, non-bank or say the non-financial private sector, such as SMEs, uh, construction firms or other like, uh, businesses, right? And finally, when it comes to comparative political economy and public policy, there is a new like, literature, especially on like Jones uh, 2018 like, paper in policy sciences. It, so when it comes to so, so public policy also needs to like, consider such like growth models and regimes like approaches uh, to like when it comes to like which policies are designed, how they are designed, why they are designed and implemented. So we also like need to like generate such debate as well. And with this, I have like reached the end of this presentation. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Dr. Coburn. It was a very interesting presentation. Um, while you were talking, uh, several people were writing to me saying this is a very interesting presentation and I totally agree. The floor is now open for those of you who want to ask uh, a question. Please go ahead. Waiting for questions, can I ask? Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Karam. It's uh, very nice to see you again and uh, thank you for the very interesting presentation. And uh, my question is when you differentiate between credit-led development and consumption-led development, what do you think these transition economies, particularly I am talking about Kazakhstan, natural resource rich, trying to get into the development race, what do you think would be an appropriate model for these countries, credit-led or consumption-led? Um, yeah, Baba, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for this uh, question. So the first is, is so, so when it comes to the credit led and the consumption led, it is also that sometimes they use it interchangeably in the literature. So um, because the credit led means like, the, like mostly it is there to not, so there is also investment, but these like, like uh, gross models, the credit led models, such as in the Anglo-Saxon uh, countries that jurisdiction, such as in the US, UK, so in the literature, they are sometimes they could, like, used like, interchangeably. But when it comes to say, um, so in transition economy, so, so in which like areas you channel or you can like make use of your uh, extractive resources or like uh, growth or say it's like benefits, uh, you can you generate through say uh, like exports of uh, uh, natural like resources. So, um, I mean, credit that model is very, um, say, 
it has its own like fragilities if it's too much dependent on capital capital inflows. So when the in, when the international standards are like tightened, then you observe or you experience a crisis. So the likelihood of so so it is a, a risky model. So if you can, I don't know if it's in terms of like transition. So uh, when it comes to like uh, using your resources and like wealth like generated from these resources and to invest in like production could be like could be an option uh, because I mean you can like rely on foreign demand if I mean so, 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 so such calculations could I mean need to be done uh, otherwise I mean like to just like reliance on like a consumption that just uh, is uh, is not like sustainable in the longer period and it is a risky business as we can observe in the Turkey, Turkish case or in like other like uh, areas such as in uh, other uh, say like um, uh, perhaps in, but like it is a bit like, um, so, so Mexico, like in Malaysia, Brazil, like Indonesia are a bit like different like when it comes to like major de developing countries in terms of their market economic structures as they also export natural resources. But such a dependence on the like capital inflows, so dependent financialization is a bit a, a, a risky business. So uh, perhaps like the channeling your resources to like more the like production, and to uh, use your like, your so to put your like eggs in like a different like, baskets. Uh, also, it by like selling these like, goods and products both in the internal and also external markets, might also like generate the more like resources for say the like, consumption perhaps in the like. Uh, of foreign and, and internal goods and services. So, so I don't have a clear cut uh, answer here uh, because it requires like a like post benefit analysis and also like a future looking like uh, analysis of your potential markets, both at home and, and abroad. But at least we know from the Turkish case that credit that uh, model is a risky business in the longer term because it is very dependent on fecal capital flows. When there is not ca uh, enough capital inflows, then it is very absurd that uh, it is possible that your economic growth rates can go down or economy slows down, uh, as credit expansion is also very dependent on uh, generating or say like uh, getting a more like the resources, the capital uh, uh, for internal consumption. Uh, sorry, Ricardo, I don't want to monopolize, but if I can just have a little bit of... Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, so, no, when we when we talk about, uh, because in Kazakhstan, for example, there is a lot of talk about diversification of the economy. And I personally is of the opinion that they need to specialize in the Ricardian sense. So, Ricardo, that was your name fellow. <laughs> In the Ricardian sense, everyone needs to specialize in their comparative advantage rather than focusing on diversification. And ADB, IMF, everyone, World Bank is asking Kazakhstan to diversify. So given, given your ideas about this, what do you think? Is diversification is the right strategy or is they should focus on their comparative advantage? Um, but competitive advantage in terms of, so, so, so how do we define our competitive advantage? So it is all like factors, so, so are like the factors of production or say like, say like it is. Yeah, it mainly natural resources, uranium, yeah. oil, gas. Yeah, yeah but um, yeah, in terms of like when it comes to, uh, I couldn't like remember that, like, a, was it like Heshka Rohlin? No, I don't remember, but this. So this like simple like recording was a bit like a developed like in uh, in modern like, years so in recent years uh, like later uh, but uh, like it looks at, like whether we are like like uh, so we have advantage on like labor intensive or capital intensive goods so in which so so in which sectors like you have such like competitive advantages so so first we might need to like look at this. So, because I'm not familiar with the like micro macroeconomic structure of Kazakhstan, if, as, I, as far as I know, it is like mostly on like natural resources. But diversification can pay off in the longer term, as I am a more say um, a bit a bit more like uh, uh, um, 
uh, it is my like personal like view like here like because my like tendency is to balance like things so that I can like like I like share like my risks uh, in my like 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 larger portfolio. So 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 sharing the risk in to like in, in, in different baskets could be like better. Uh, but in terms of specialization, so if you observe that, I mean, there is like external or say the internal markets, but firstly, I mean, it could be the, the selling of goods or, or services uh, beyond bodies. Uh, specialization could also be like possible, but depends on the uh, uh, the like macroeconomic structure and the like, capital or say like labor intensive advantages the country might have. But this is a more technical side as we are also, the, also talking about the political economy implications or drivers, we also need to look at what the government and business wants. So, so what they also prefer also, I mean, like it generates the growth model, which then relies on which, uh, which, uh, which like sectors and business dominates the, the political process and the arena. And their uh, and these and their like, interactions then also like determine like uh, so 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 it might not be just that technical like rational issue here so so we might also like need to analyze like examine explore uh, what these act so who these actors are what they prefer and the and the and the arrangements uh, that re that regulate their interactions as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Thank you. Our colleagues are shy. Well, you know, since everybody's shy, I will ask a question myself. Uh, okay. There's a, a, a there's a big literature in, in comparative politics uh, about the relationship between democracy and economic growth. Uh, economists uh, like Asimoglu, they've also written about it uh, and the field is uh, <clears throat> bitterly divided between those who believe that actually democracy is really a main driver of the of, of the economic growth to us Moglu is one of them well there's a large number of scholars from Barrow to Chaworski that have repeatedly noted that once you control for those things that make democracy democratic there's actually no net benefit from democracy on growth and actually there's a, a negative uh, and a negative influence now in the light of your presentation do you think that uh, to make a Turkish economy grow more in the year to come. A, a regime change in which direction would be more beneficial? Like to more democracy or, or in the other direction? So whether it is um, like driven by like the democracy or not. So, so we have like counterfactual, right? So, 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 so that's why then the like, so this debate is a bit like, say a bit like, uh, like pulling from like different like angles. So whether like democracy that causes or democracy is not, it could be an, a necessary, but not, but an like, insufficient uh, uh, condition to generate like, economic growth. So in this case, so, so here, um, so first is I think so so, so 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 in the so in the Turkish case what we observe is um, you so, so once you do so once you disregard your international and local uh, capabilities and it's and their like uh, uh, limits then it is very likely that your policies can be counterproductive. So whether this country is, so, so, so consider that this country is very like has become very dependent on uh, credit that regime and like after like the one or two years, then this government decided to uh, devalue the like a devalue Turkish lira and then implement the like, loose monetary policy and bank regulatory policies so as to like maintain an like, easier credit to the market. Uh, easier credit to the uh, non non financial private sector. So this also then uh, like uh, led to the uh, like a very like substantial devaluation of like uh, uh, reduction in the like value of uh, Turkish lira, and then whether to like to generate the economic growth through like the exports. So so, so the so the government tries to. Also, so according to the like discourse, so like the 
current model, so the current economic growth regi uh, model is being like is in transformation right now from credit led to export led regime. So, um, so but whether this like a pays off or not, so it, because I mean this like because this because this economy like relies mostly on uh, uh, like is a competitive based on its compared to prices, so not through like productivity gains. So if you do not recognize or if you disregard the, the limits of your economy, whether it is democracy or not, your macroeconomic structure can put significant constraints to your potential economic growth rate. So, and how such the uh, transformation could be achieved is like another question, but, uh, um, but at least, I mean, if you like, disregard such limits, then what you observe is heightened risk perceptions and too much devaluation. This could be beneficial for the export-oriented manufacturers. And in the longer run, the, the, the expectation is higher growth rates and productivity gains, but we still don't know. It is an experiment currently, as the also even the like the pro pro government journalists claim even so we are like currently like doing this like experiment whether it pays up or not and this was achieved and this will be achieved under an authoritarian regime but this also makes the nation its households economic actors the main consumers poorer day by day so you and so so you try to restrict internal consumption for the sake of external consumption i'm sorry i will just thank you dr koban with your permission there's one question from the ah, floor sorry, from Basil. Sorry. Basil, go ahead. sorry for the background uh, hi thank you for the presentation uh, my question is related to the correlation between crisis and deinstitutionalization so um what were the indicators of deinstitutionalization in turkey in your case Thank you. So, uh, so this, so this, so this relates to the institutionalization of bureaucratic autonomy, right? I'm getting it correct. Yeah, I mean, um, however you define the institutionalization in terms oh, okay. of uh, bureaucratic model. You, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so, so in so our case. So yeah, sure. So so so, so this um, so in terms of the institutionalization, we refer to erosion in autonomy, the jury and de facto autonomy of the central bank and the bank regulator. So we so so in the early two thousands, so these two organizations were given legal autonomy. It was in the it was in the banking law. It was in the law on the central bank. It was written on paper that these. Uh, organizations had legal autonomy from the principles. So daily operations, daily policy decisions were not uh, subject to political intervention. So these organizations were left free to choose their policy instruments that are positive like policy objectives, even if these are also uh, like uh, operate in line and also the, these three organizations also like work uh, under the auspices or say the like uh, uh, political support and in consultation with the government. What we observe in terms of the institutionalization is that we observe that what was written, what was changed in the early 2000s in terms of the tenure of governors and deputy governors and uh, in terms of the like intervention into daily, like uh, uh, so, which is the which reflects the the jury side. And when it comes to uh, de facto uh, operations, so de facto autonomy uh, relates to uh, self like developing self policy preferences, uh, reliance on regulatory capabilities on their own. We observe, especially after the uh, which. Which first began in the 2008 crisis with uh, with the like GFC, which put the initial constraints on the uh, on the on the like uh, on credit expansion, and also which then led to uh, an internal uh, trigger the internal like, dynamics for uh, the like, constraints on credit expansion. But 
it became a very like uh, observed, observable, especially after the 2013, uh, in the aftermath of the Fed and, and other major central banks, which then like started to like withdraw, uh, uh, withdraw like money to quantitative easing uh, from that year onwards. So, so, so this then says so, so in order to mobilize domestic resources to be observed that the government then try to then engage in daily interventions, engage in discursive struggles with, with these organizations. And I can even like tell you like one like anecdote from my uh, like uh, uh, informal visit to the to the like regulator. So this was in like one of the, like main like departments in the in the like bank regulator, and I like the, and I was in the room to the in the like in this large room to visit the head of this department, and then even if his like uh, uh, colleagues like left 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 for left for lunch at that uh, I mean at that day. And I like asked this, asked the like head of the department as why he did not leave the, leave for lunch, and he said, "Please just sit down, Karim, and then you, uh, I'm like currently like, working on a new regulation." And I asked whether it was like provided, it was like like uh, uh, like if it like grew like uh, like uh, uh, within the organization. He said it was asked from asked by the minister, so Ministry of the Treasury and Public Finance. So. So the so, so the ministry asked us to like work on the regulation, and now I'm I'm trying to like work on this regulation. I asked whether the regulator, referring to banks, had any like uh, like uh, advanced like uh, information or also the knowledge of this regulation. He said they will be knowledgeable, like they will know it once we publish the regulation. So previously, as I like argued in my like observed in my like earlier like, field work in 2016, for example, so I can also observe in four years. Um, I mean, the the policy making process involved the banking sector and the and the and the banking and the bank regulator to consult each other when it comes to like the designing the policies, when it comes to implementation, etc. So, so these two actors that worked in collaboration, but what you observe informally so this is just an anecdotal information which i observed myself this regulator like began like began to like, work on a given regulation because the, because of this like a request but it is not a request because i mean it is the principle that demands this regulation and this guy even like skipped his lunch and started to work on this regulation and we observed like say like a few after we after they say a few weeks after that after that meeting uh, uh, I mean, we were able to like observe this regulation. So this is how such like so, so after the crisis. So, so as you observe that there are like constraints on your on like tapping uh, internal so, sorry like external resources in the form of uh, a slowdown in in capital inflows or even capital outflows. So you try to mobilize internal resources to remain in power, and to do that you also need to intervene in. And the uh, daily operations of your uh, public organization, which might resist because of the uh, because of the fact that they are given legal autonomy, which might then play the sweet of veto play a role, then you need to like, feel this pressure to intervene in their uh, daily like uh, intervent uh, uh, daily operations to set to design and to implement certain policies. Otherwise, you might not observe such like uh, uh, such like policies and. And this is not just daily operations, but you also try to capture them by firing and firing and hiring, as you might like like they know, uh, perhaps in like uh, as you might have like uh, come across in, in the news that there has been like two like a frequent like changes in the governance of the central bank. So whoever does not like reduce interest rates, you observe this person is sacked and a new person is hired, and and the new hired uh, governor. In the in the very first meeting, reduces interest rates. So these and these were not observable previously, especially after, uh, especially before 2013, which became a like, uh, uh, which which was a like, critical juncture. First, is then uh, uh, generating external constraints because of the reduction in uh, quantitative easing policies uh, in uh, uh, in the like uh, which we call in the paper the like, capitals of capital. Uh, from the like major central banks and then the like, political instability 
uh, uh, since 2013, 2016 failed coup, and then the like Bronson crisis, 2018, etc. cetera. Simeon, final question. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mehmet, but my camera is not on. It's not working for some reason uh, now. I, I don't know why. But anyway, I just had a, a, a quick question. Uh, you know, in macroeconomics, they always say that uh, in the long run, uh, monetary policy is, is neutral. That, uh, you know, that it doesn't influence economic growth in the long run. I, uh, I'm, did you, do you think this is the case or what do you think is going on with uh, Turkey in the moment? I know with about the rapid de depreciations at the moment, but do you think this is the case? Uh, but in, so, so in terms of influence of what in macroeconomics, I couldn't get. Uh -huh. So oh, they the say that uh, monetary policy is neutral in the long run. Oh. In these I, lo I, loose I, financial I, conditions are, are neutral. They're not going to change long run economic growth. Oh, okay, so um, so uh -huh. so you mean that so 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 like the so whatever your like monetary policy is, your I mean long term economic growth um, say like regresses to this to its normal rate, right? Yeah, but, it's not going to affect a long run economic growth. Let's say in a matter of 10, 15, 20 years, if we look ahead, yeah. uh -huh. loose monetary con conditions are not going to affect long term economic growth. Uh, but I also no, this is what, the, what they yeah. say at least, right? This, yeah, sure. this is what <laughs> macroeconomists say. Uh, yeah, but like even if they like, adopt this approach, I mean, I'm uh, I suspect whether this government is also uh, long term oriented. So this is my concern too. So, so if you are like very like short term oriented and you just like, want to, to remain in power, but in but in your discourse, if you are like trying to, I mean, you need to appeal the like political economic concerns of your political constituency. Otherwise, so, so I have this. So in the like the paper, I also like the site. It's a very uh, so very uh, uh, like substantial like uh, 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 anecdotal information as well. So uh, one of the uh, deputy uh, heads of the like uh, uh, heads of a like major like the department in the in the central bank, who is like uh, whose room like window uh, just like faces a very large construction uh, uh, project in Ankara, and he showed this project with his fingers and, and told me, Karim, if I don't take, if I don't consider the preferences of these guys, they will hang me the next day. So it is about this, so, so if you do not incorporate their concerns, even a, like, the Giri Autonomous like, Central Banker has, like, has already internalized this approach that if I do not address their concerns, they will like hang me next day. So, so if you have already observed that, and, and if the government has also clientelistic relations with these with these firms, so whether or not this, I mean, whether or not like today's loose monetary policy generates more economic growth rate tomorrow, might not be my concern. I, if I do not want to be like hanged like next day, you need to address their concerns. So, but at least when it comes to discourse. You observe too much depreciation because according to the rhetoric, we have, we are currently working against the interest rate lobby. This is also shared by the, the, uh, uh, by the economic advisors of Erdogan. And this was all, like, argued like many years ago because this argument like, base, is based on like, too much consumption, relies on uh, high interest rates to attract foreign capital, and we have become a, a paradise for consumption and capital inflow that pays high interest rates to foreign capital. So what is being like, done today with loose monetary to policy today is you try to achieve two things. First, first you need to, I mean, you are trying to address the concerns for easy access to credit, of your political economy constituency. Second, loose monetary policy leads to depreciation, which then triggers or the causes, enables uh, price competitiveness in international markets. And because there is also this a supply chain concerns, et cetera, like the, in the, like the current uh, conjuncture, then the government also tries to achieve this 
export-led production uh, growth model uh, by widening the tide and capitalizing on the current conjuncture in the world as it is trying to like, like play this the card of the like, being in between Asia and Europe to be a production center hub for it's so in between Asia and Europe. So this is based on the conjuncture. This is based on addressing your political economic constituencies preferences. So whether it generates or not, um, in the short run, uh, it will generate at least, I mean, this year, the country is expected to grow at double digits. But next year or later, because the like uh, like the local consumers have become like uh, uh, very much poorer because of the depreciation, because of high and high inflation, which also does not reflect the the, the official numbers. But at least what we observe in the field, once you are as a like a, in the field as a consumer, uh, it doesn't reflect the official numbers. But we are becoming poorer and poorer. But for the sake of generating external demand. Whether this generates like more, more economic growth, I do not, so I suspect if it does, but I, but adopting that approach, I mean, we can like test the, high, test the hypothesis later, but I would like, like, if I were to bet today, I would like put my like the, uh, chips on uh, either like regressing to the natural rate of economic growth, which is around the four or five percent of this country, its historical average, or even low rates, especially if there is uh, uh, less consumption in the next years. Thank you so much, Dr. Coburn. It was a very, very fascinating presentation, and you handle all of our questions uh, and you, you answered in great detail with great patience. For this, we're very grateful. Thank you so much. Uh, for finding thank the time so to talk to us. us. Thank you so much for and having you. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you to all the participants uh, that uh, in their busy schedule, they also found the time to be with us uh, this evening. And uh, thank you, everybody, and have uh, an excellent evening. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.